What's Trending is presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Learn more at bodyguardswithaz.com. Talking BYU receivers, and the BYU receiver room is getting more and more crowded, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Right. Uh, the Cougar offense has options at wide receiver. You have guys like Cody Epps, Keanu Hill, and Chase Roberts returning from last year's squad, as well as transfer additions in Keelan Marion and Darius Lassiter. So, Dave, with so many options at wide receiver, does Keaton Slovis need an established go-to guy for the offense to be successful? Do they have to have a wide receiver number one? I love this topic. Every quarterback seems to find a guy. In the NFL, they all seem to have a guy that's going to bail them out. Last year, we throw Puka Nakua in there as the number one guy, even though he wasn't the number one guy in every game. But toward the end, and certainly when healthy, uh, when they needed the touchdown against Boise State, it, I'm just going to chuck it up to Puka. Right. That was just going to happen. Um, but, but last year it was unique, especially with some of the guys coming back. Um, the go-to guy against Baylor was Chase Roberts. The go-to guy against Notre Dame was Cody Epps. Keanu Hill was the go-to guy against Wyoming, South Florida, um, uh, uh, Utah Tech. You know, we had three touchdowns in the third, second quarter. So everyone's had their moments. So I don't know if there was just the one guy, largely because of Puka's health. But with this group coming back, Keanu Hill's an attractive target. Yeah. Robert's an attractive target. Uh, Cody Epps, we know what he can do. And then these new com newcomers with Roberts, and, or with Lassiter and Marion, and then you got Parker Kingston, Dom Henry, and, and some of the others. Who of that group would you say, please be the number one? Yeah, look, there's, that's hard to answer right now because I think so many of them could be the number one option. I mean, we still are learning about the guys that are coming in via the transfer portal. We certainly know a lot more about Epps and Hill and Roberts just because we've seen more of them. Look, I, I, I think Cody Epps, from what we've seen, has the potential to be a number one guy. I think Chase Roberts can also do that. And, and look, I realize I'm, I'm going through all of them, but I, I think that's why... Normally you hear this with quarterbacks where like if you have two, you have none. Right. I don't think that's the case here with the receivers where you have so many if you don't have a dominant go-to clear-cut number one wide receiver that you don't have any. I, I think it's actually just the opposite. And I think with this position with what BYU has done, and I didn't even really look at it as a problem that needed to be fixed. I was actually quite happy with what was coming back before any of the transfers even became part of the equation. But I feel like BYU is like, look, Let's throw a bunch of numbers at this. There may be somebody that gravitates towards the top and becomes that guy because there always is. Yeah. But I don't know if you go in saying, okay, well, you're going to be the number one option and then you're going to be number two. I don't think you need to have that with this option. And we haven't even touched on the fact that we're, we haven't even talked about the tight ends, which I expect to have a significantly larger role. I, I, I don't look at the fact that maybe BYU doesn't have a number one option as a bad thing. I think there's a lot of guys, to your point, is what you were talking about last year. You could have a game where Cody Epps just absolutely kills it. And then the next game, it's Lassiter. And then Chase Roberts comes in and really is just kind of clicking. I think that's what you can have. And then if one of those guys turns out to be a dominant Go-to receiver, great. But I just don't know if you need to have that with this offense. If there is one, if I had to choose one, I would choose Isaac Rex <laughs> to be Keaton Slovis' number one target, his bailout guy, his go-to guy. Because if he is, that means big things are available for the receivers downfield. I look at how Dennis Pitta worked with Max Hall. What did that mean for Austin Colley? They put Austin Colley in the NFL. Yeah. Because everyone's like, oh, he's going to go to Dennis. You know what? He did go to Dennis. Uh, there's Johnny Harleen, there's Clay Brown, there's Gordon Hudson. Whenever BYU's had a dominant tight end, everybody prospers. Uh, and so going into this season, and, and Slovis and, and, and Isaac spent a lot of time together working out down in Southern California at Isaac's house, um, I like this bond. And that bond hasn't been over the middle of the field the last couple of years. Uh, Isaac Rex has 21 touchdowns in his career. If he gets back to those rookie numbers, to where he was the target, he was Zach Wilson's bailout guy. And what did that mean for everybody else? They're wide open because everyone's worried about the big guy over the middle. If they can restore that, and that's Keaton Slovis' number one guy, everybody wins. If it's Cody Epps, then put two guys on Cody Epps yeah, and take him out. Right. Um, 
you know, it's great to have options, but I love the 6'6 six, six tight end. Let him be the number one target. Yeah, I, I expect a significant increase in his, first of all, his looks, but second of all, his receptions and his touchdowns. I, I think we're going to get back to what we saw as, as a freshman right. where he was absolutely dominant in his freshman season. Now you know what else we saw when he was a freshman? 10 and 1. <laughs> That's true. I'll also take that. I'll take that as well. It was it 11 and 1? It was something in 1. Yeah. It was, it was, the offense just clicked because there was a big go to guy. Well, and look, and he, he's a full year now removed from being from being hurt he's a he played last year he was not a hundred percent all year long the fact that he was able to do what he did that soon after a pretty significant leg injury was pretty impressive so to get him back healthier and now I, I think the offense will dictate more looks his way I think Keaton Slovis from what we've seen just in his um, arsenal before he I think he's probably going to use the tight end a little bit more than maybe what we saw from Jaron Hall last year but I, I, I just look a quarterback you got to have a guy that's your quarterback you got to have a number one quarterback I think f to a large degree you need to have a go-to running back now you can certainly do that by committee we've seen B-Way you do that a lot but I, I do at the end of the day still think you need a go-to running back yeah. committees aren't great no but for a receiver when you've got this much talent I just don't know if it is imperative you have to have one guy that you know game in and game out is the one that's going to get all the looks I, I just don't know especially with the guys and look and this let's let's bring this up this is our stat of the day let's get to this because I think this is pretty interesting our stat of the day here about the BYU receivers it's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. BYU returns four players who had at least 20 receptions, 300 yards, and three touchdowns last season. And that's the first time that BYU has had that coming back since the 2008 season. So the guys that we're talking about, so the guys that are coming back this year from last year that had that. So again, at least 20 catches, 300 yards, and three touchdowns. You're talking about Keanu Hill, who had 36 catches, 572, and seven touchdowns. Cody Epps, 39 catches, four, almost 460 with six touchdowns. Isaac Rex, 22 for 320 and six. And Chase Roberts, 22 for 357 and three touchdowns. That's pretty impressive because you're comparing that to the last time it happened when the guys were some guys you just mentioned. Yeah. Dennis Pitta, Austin Colley, Harvey Unga, and Michael Reed. That's not bad. Who was the number one benefactor the last time the tight end was the go-to guy. It was Austin Collie. Well, no, I mean recently. Oh, it was Dax Mill. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Where's Dax Mill? In, In the NFL with the Commanders. Uh, and, and, and Dax Mill was huge downfield His Isaac Rex was big over the middle. So I'm sticking with that one. Get Rex, make him the go-to guy and everyone wins. Yeah. Uh, as they did back in 2008. And, uh, and we'll see. Yeah. And it's nice to have the options that they have. Do they need a number one? Probably not. Would they be better with the number one? If the tight end's the number one at BYU, it always seems to be yes. And you look, by the end of the year, there will probably be somebody that emerges that we look back and say, okay, well, we went in thinking you maybe don't need one, but as it, as it turned out, this is the player that ultimately became that guy. It will, yeah. it will work itself out.